Lisa, I've known you for right. six, six or seven years. Somewhere around there. Yeah. So this is Letha Martin. She is with the with Eve's Place, and she is the actually the associate director for overseeing the rural program, which includes um, the Navajo Nation and the Southern La Paz County. And I'll let her explain a little bit more about that. My name is Becky Norwood. I'm with The Woman I Love, and with, this is part of our We Choose to Thrive series. And Letha and I have known each other well before I, I gave I became brave enough to tell my story, and I'm so delighted that you've taken the time to, to be with us on this interview. Letha's very involved with Eve's Place, and she says in her bio that as part of her training to be a part of this in leadership and management, she designed and executed a, a project that would benefit the community, and that included setting up her day spa, which I'm familiar with her day spa. And she created a fundraising event that would be a really great shopping and pampering experience, but also shed light on Eve's Place. Eve's Place has done some amazing things in our community here in the Phoenix area, and it, it goes much further than that. So I would like for you to kind of tell us a little bit about Eve's Place and then some of the projects that you're working on right now. Sure. Well, Eve's Place started off about 2004, and they started off with just a small group of women who wanted to do something in the surprise area, and there were about three or four women who got together, and they were brainstorming as to what they wanted to do, and their first thought was to just build a shelter, and so that's really how Eve's Place got started. It was um, a small house that was in surprise, and we think we had two bedrooms at that time, and we put as many beds as we could in there. Um, and that worked out well for a short time until we, we really had more clients and we had room. So we found another home that was a little bit larger and we moved into that one. And um, then we even had another person who donated a home to us. And so we moved into a two-story house that even provided even more room and more space for our clients. But all the time, we're finding that the only time that we can help clients is if they were in our shelter. Mm -hmm. So all those women, children, and men, which was another issue for us, couldn't come into our shelter program because there wasn't enough room. So we decided that it had to have some kind of change. We had to do something different. The other barrier was that a lot of times in that home that we had in the surprise area, it was... Um, compromised. The security of it, the, the location of it was compromised. A lot of people going in and out all the time, not only police cars, but lots of activity with program staff. and Hard to uh, monitor it. So, you know, the neighborhood started to see that it was um, something going on there. And before you knew it, they weren't very happy with us being in their neighborhood. So we ended up with a, one of those solutions is that we ended up with an apartment complex. And we had about eight, um, eight apartments in this complex. So there's always traffic in and out of apartment complex, so that was convenient. And we could actually host, uh, we could have men clients in our program, which we do have male clients. So there was that availability for them too. But even though we had more opportunity, we had more clients in the program at that time, we were still limited as to who we could see because some of the problem is that clients are not always wanting to go to shelter. You know, right, the victims right. are not ready for that. And they're not ready to leave their perpetrator. So we found that we had to start seeing them off-site to meet with them on a one-on-one. -on -one. So after several years, our executive director and our program director, that's Laura Horsley and um, Marcy Chenoweth, and they brainstormed and they decided that they would close shelter and do something so totally different that isn't, wasn't even in existence, um, except for one other place in the United States, and that's called mobile, mobile advocacy. So it actually means that we go to see clients wherever they're located, in whatever way that they are, whether they're still with their perpetrator or they want to move out or they are out. But so there was no limitations. Mm, that's so that's how we got started. You know, we have a mutual friend, Mary Lou, um, yeah. who, who uh, she's always kept me abreast of all the things because she's been very, she's been on the board for that number of years from as the well. the beginning, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's been really amazing to, 
to we would always several times a year we meet for lunch and she's always telling me all the details of this so the mobile program how, how far reaching is it and exactly what do you do on your mobile program right so in Maricopa County we see clients all the way from out to Chandler past Chandler to um, uh, up to Wickenburg, we go up to Wickenburg because we're in the middle school and the high schools up there in Wickenburg, all over the valley, East Valley, West Valley. Then we're also into the court site and Blythe, Air, Blythe wow. California. So we cross the border drive. there. Yep. And that's part of my territory. And then we're up in the Navajo Nation. So we're up towards the Four Corners. We are in uh, uh, Chinle and um, uh, Cayente right now. But we've also gone over into Shiprock, which is in New Mexico, and we see clients in Utah also. So we're really expanding. So when you when you actually go into these communities as there, what is your practice? How do you get? How are you spreading this? What are you doing? And what services do you provide for these people? Well, the services can range anywhere from helping them with their safety planning. It's um, to help them. Stay safe in the location where they are, but it could also be that they need to exit, and so we help them with their exit planning. Really trying to focus on the documentation that they need to, to be able to leave their perpetrator, things that they don't think about when they're in a rush to walk out the door. Um, so we help them really plan with that. We help them with a variety of resources, hooking them up with legal services. Eve's Place has a legal advocate, so we can use um, our legal advocates for emergency orders of protection, emergency custody orders, immigration, things like that. So that's part of the services that we do. We also have group support, about um, 10 different classes or support groups throughout the week in different parts of the valley. And we partnership with lots of different community, um, community rooms and police departments and um, girls and boys clubs and things like that so we can drop in and see clients there too. So that they're in a, safe, they're in a safer environment that way. Right, right. And some of them are still in a high-risk environment. They're still living with a perpetrator. So we help them to, we work with them specifically to um, navigate through the legal process if they are wanting to separate or to leave but also to help them stay safe. That's the bottom line, is helping them stay safe. So you don't have any homes anymore then, do you? No, no we don't. We utilize the uh, crisis line so we can help those victims who really do need shelter because we, um, oftentimes that's one of the first things that they need is just a safe place to go. So shelter is a, is a, a need and it's very full throughout the valley. So that's uh, one of our services that we can do too is help them get into shelter. Very cool. Well, I know that when um, when I first started hearing about Eve's Place, I knew that it had the different homes. So it's, I find that it's really interesting and fascinating that you found a different way to actually get this get this off the ground and actually find because there are a, there is a number of homes, and I'm sure they all get filled up very quickly, safe places for them to be. But there, there was a need for other types of services, and, and your organization was able to find that. That's really mm -hmm. cool. Exactly. So in the Phoenix area, do you have a need for more participants, to people to, to go out and meet with these people? Actually, we are um, interviewing for advocates right now, um, also youth advocates, uh, group support, somebody who can do the groups for us. Um, one of the other programs that we have is called Transitional Housing. So our clients who have been in with us for about a month, if they're ready to move out and get their own place, then each place will help to subsidize their rent for six months to a year. Wow. Yeah. That's so incredible. It's really good. Yeah. So that's one of the things that we also do. And um, so the clients are in all different stages of their healing right now. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wow. And so the when you've reached out to the reservations, what has been your experience with um, with that? <laughs> well, that's a little challenging to get into the reservation. So um, luckily, both of our advocates up there are from the Navajo Reservation. 
So there is a lot of connections already made with them. Um, one of my advocates came from shelter there, so she's very familiar with the process and the connections that she needs, the resources that she needs in order to help her clients. So, but we're slowly making headway. They're slowly starting to know who we are and what we do and what we're there to help support the shelters and the programs that are already existing. We work with the FBI. The FBI will oftentimes call us to um, take over, maybe even transport a client for forensic exams. And transportation might take two hours to get to Flagstaff or two and a half hours just to get one way to Flagstaff. So we do that, too, for our clients. Sometimes they're not our clients, but we will transport. That's, ex that's, that's exceptional. So if somebody wanted to, to be a, become a part of this program, what, what, what do you look for in a person? What, what credentials do they need to have? It's really important to have some sort of domestic violence or sexual assault or teen dating abuse, some kind of a background. It's great if somebody has a degree in social work. But that's not often necessary if there is some experience that they've had, even coming from shelter or homeless programs or whatever. Somebody where they've been in the service industry of helping individuals to, you know, better their lives. But because we go through a long process of training, we will help them to learn specifically about domestic violence and sexual assault if they're not familiar with it. But um, for most of the advocates, I would say a, um, a degree. A, a, a bachelor's possibly in, in any type of um, category, but specifically if it's in social work would be really helpful. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, we also hire aides. So our aides will help us with transportation, client needs, um, answering the hotline, and we're hiring for that also. So if somebody just wants to be around this environment, then they would possibly uh, want to apply for an aide position. Very cool. So, um, what other needs are about our Izzy's Eats place? What needs do you have? I know you have a lot of fundraising things that you do. Share with us, you know, about what needs there are that maybe some a listener would be interested in supporting, and also any of your fundraising efforts. Okay. The um, one of the needs we have right now is for volunteers. Every nonprofit's always looking for volunteers. And the volunteers will do a wide variety of chores and, and tasks with us and for us. They will work with the advocates to um, maybe help out with the support groups. They will answer the hotline if they're trained and they want to do that. They can also assist with child care. They help us with our donations that we get in to sort so that when the, um, when the clients do come in, we have a little shopping area that they can go through and, and they can take anything out that they want for free. So they help us to sort that and make that nice and tidy. Um, they'll help us with in computer input and filing and, you know, clerical uh, chores like that. Sometimes we, they just want to do a fundraise, a fundraiser for us or a, a fun drive, you know, they might do a, a diaper drive for us or a canned goods drive or something like that to kind of help, you know, replenish the items on the shelf that go out to the food bag, food bags for our clients. So. Um, we have a couple of fundraisers coming up right now. It's the larger ones. It's our Denim and Diamonds. It's a uh, live band and country music, dancing and dinner and everything. So that's coming up on March 11th. So that's uh, soon. And then that another is, uh, is this Wednesday night. It's our tour, taste and tour. It's a wine tasting with a tour of the program and meeting the staff. Well, I know I was very impressed when I, um, I had the tour when I came by to see you. Uh, what a couple months ago right around Christmas time and you had just had your where they could all come in and do their get their Christmas gifts and shopping whatever it was but you have a very nice facility for being able to accommodate all this type of thing thank you yeah it's it's again really grown this last year we had uh, one half of the building and now we have a whole building site that's just for clients and groups and meeting with their advocates and meeting with their legal um, advocate. So that's really kind of nice to have a side that's just dedicated to them. And the other side's all admin. But yes, the program has grown very much. And each place has really grown up a lot. It has. <laughs> it, has. it started off with like a staff of like four or five. And now 
when I'm done filling all of the uh, positions that are opening, we'll have about 44 on our staff. How wonderful. That is yes, just yes. awesome. Yeah. So is, how would anybody get a hold of you, have a, a East Place, if they want to volunteer, they want to do some donation, they just want to learn more about your program? A few students um, are here as interns right now. There are six of them Perfect. interns with us. Yeah. So okay. they get their intern hours here. Perfect. So if you wanted to get a hold of me, the best thing probably would be to email me. So um, it's L Martin M-A-R-T-I-N, at E place.org and then there's eats place.org for the website correct yes mm -hmm. yes very good so that would be the start for volunteering or if they just want to do donations um we do have a thrift store which is pretty large and it's here in peoria and they take items all kinds of items and i think they still pick up it for the large items but part of those donations to the thrift store will actually go back to the client some of the ladies in my transitional housing, when they've left and they don't have anything, they will actually fill out a wish list and they will say what they need to open up their home. And so the thrift store will gather those things together and even deliver it to the, to the client when she's ready or he's ready to move it to their apartment. It is so awesome to know that these services are out there and there is some alternatives. There's, there's ways that people can get themselves out of a bad situation. With, you know, as they're ready to take that leap, it can be really scary. Right. You know, it's such yeah. huge changes and they, so many uncertainties. Yeah. Yeah. And it's helpful to have somebody who can help navigate through that because, um, you know, it's not easy. It's not an easy program to leave where they're at and try to figure out your life's goals at that point, especially when they're so disadvantaged by income an awful lot. You know, they're... They don't have any money to themselves, and so we help with a lot of things that can help them navigate their own lifestyle, healthy lifestyle again. Very yeah. good. And the, the teen program is amazing, too. So that's another area that we're really focused on is to, in fact, February is Teen Dating Awareness Month. And uh, it's helping those kids to know what is a healthy relationship. You know, it's so often that they're so in love at this point in their lives that they don't recognize the warning signs and the danger signs of an abusive pattern of behavior. No, and it's such a vulnerable time of their life too. It depends, a lot of it depends on the background of how they're, they've been parented. Still, that's, when, you, when they're in a situation like that, if they haven't had a good solid basis and example to follow with some good solid, foundation beneath them this can be the most confusing time of their lives yeah. yes yeah very cool well i know one of the young women that were in our we Type choose to thrive book does a lot of work um, i know you've been in touch with her too tessa the potential the the reach that you have is just outstanding and i so appreciate that you took the time today to kind of make us aware of what's available and what's out there you know, here in our local area, but it also might be a really great example for other communities that probably have never heard of something like this. Um, right. And is it okay for them to reach out for you to you to ask about your program? Absolutely. I'd be happy to talk to anybody that would like more information or to help them specifically if it's their need. Very cool. Thank you so much for taking this time for our We Choose to Thrive series. Becky, thank you so much for everything that you do, too. I appreciate it. it was uh, good.